Hey guys, so in the last video we talked about one common task that you would want to do with the arrays which is traversals. Today we want to look at another common task that you would do with arrays which is performing cumulative statistics on arrays which now this loosely comes down to tasks like finding the minimum element in an array, finding the maximum element in an array, finding the sum of all the elements of an array. These are all cumulative statistics that we want to do on array on arrays. So let's let's begin. Let's say you have an array. Uh, let's say without any loss of uh, generality, let's say you have 23, 52, 1, 91, 90, uh, let's say 24. So let's say this is the array and you have to find out the largest number in this array. So the largest number in this array is actually 52. How would you go about algorithmically or programmatically computing this maximum? So one thing to notice here is that the maximum of this array is nothing but the maximum of this green bubble with 24. Right? Now the maximum of green bubble is nothing but the maximum of this pink bubble with 91. You can subsequently try unfold this further. Maximum of this pink circle is nothing but the maximum of this blue circle with 1. The maximum of this blue circle is nothing but the maximum of 23 which is the yellow circle with 52. So do you see a way here? What, what did we say? We said that if you want the maximum of the entire array that is nothing but the maximum of the entire array except the last element with 24. So now my task is to find out the maximum of the entire array except the last element. So how would I do that? There again I say that the maximum of the entire array except the last element is nothing but the maximum of the entire array except the last two elements with the second last element. So now my task reduces to finding out the maximum of the array without the last two elements. So that again you can say that it is nothing but the maximum of the array without the last three elements and the third last element. Right. So in this way, if you keep thinking about it, you realize that you can come up with an algorithm for doing this. How do you? So what is the basic idea about on this uh, uh, of this algorithm? You you want to find out the maximum of let's say this array what you would do is you would first find out the maximum of this array which is just a single element you know the maximum of it is just that element itself you will use this to find out the maximum of this array which is now an array with two elements how would you do that that is nothing but the maximum that you have already gotten from the red and this array. now you will use the yellow maximum to compute the green maximum how would you compute the green maximum? You would say that it is nothing but whatever is the yellow maximum. If you take the max of that and the this number, you would get the maximum of the yellow bubble. And if you keep increasing your bubble now, you would gradually. So the max of this purple will be nothing but green with this last element. Then the max of let's say this brown will be nothing but this, pur this purple with this last element. And finally, let's say the max of this pink is nothing but the max of this brown with this element. And now max of this pink is what is your answer. So this is the basic idea in trying to uh, find the maximum element of an array. So how would you go about writing code for this? You would first find out the maximum of the red bubble. So let's say you have a, have a variable which is max num 
which is initialized to the max of the red bubble. What is that? That is array 0. Right? So, this is the max of the red bubble. Now, you want, it, want to use it to compute the max of the subsequent bubbles. So, what will you do? You can start a loop now from 1 all the way up to n minus 1. Now, when you are in this loop, when you are at i1, you are basically computing the max of the yellow bubble. So, that will be nothing but the max of the red bubble, which is in max num with array i. Now, this is stored again in max num. So, this max num now contains when i is 2, this max num contains the max of the yellow bubble. So, you use that to find the max of the green bubble by saying that it is the max of the yellow bubble with the element. Then now the max of the green bubble gets stored in, in this max num. So, you will use that when i is 3 in order to find the max of the purple bubble and so on. So, finally, when you are done with this loop, you would have the maximum in this max num. Yeah. So, one last thing about this, you need not really initialize max num with array 0 here. You can initialize max num with a very large, very small number. So, let us say you initialize it with int min, which is nothing but the smallest integer that can be stored. It is a C++ artifact, but uh, you can initialize it with this and then you can start your loop with 0 also, instead of starting with 1 and do the same thing, which is uh, in the loop, you are performing this max num is max of max num with array. So, then also you would get the maximum in this max num variable. Why, why does this work? Because the first time when i is 0, this max num will definitely get updated because you are starting out with a very small value. So, smaller than any other element, value of any other element in the array. Hence, when you up, the, when i is 0, this max num will itself become array 0. And that is basically what you were doing here also. And then from i equals 1, it is the same bubble concept. When i is 1, you are trying to find the max of the yellow bubble. When i is 2, you are trying to find out the max of the green bubble. i is 3 purple, i 4 brown, i 5, your pink bubble, which is your actual answer. So, you can output that answer.